Hi, this tutorial is going to show you how to use the Textbox Watermark Extension from the Ajax Control Toolkit for ASP.NET. The example we're going to do is going to be very similar to the one that is shown on the ASP.NET webpage for the Ajax Control Toolkit as seen here. You'll notice that the two text boxes on the page for first name and last name have what's called a watermark on them. They have a slightly different color background, lighter text, and some text that's provided in there to prompt the user on what to, to, what to do with the text box. When the text box is clicked, that watermark goes away and text can be entered into the text box. This can be achieved pretty easily using the text box watermark <coughs> extension control in the Ajax Control Toolkit using ASP.NET in Visual Studio. So let's start. To do that, I've created a new website and what we're going to use for this is we're going to need to create what's called a cascading style sheet. We're going to need to add a text box control and we're going to add the text box watermark extension control to our page. So to start out, since we're using Ajax and anytime we use Ajax in ASP.NET, we need to provide a script manager on our page. Now the standard script manager that comes in Visual Studio.NET is under the Ajax extension folder script manager. However, since we're using the Ajax Control Toolkit, I recommend using the script manager provided in the toolkit, the toolkit script manager. So I'm going to grab that and drag that onto the page. Once that loads, you should see the toolkit script manager at the top of the page, and your bin folder for your application has been loaded with source code for all the different controls. Next, I'm just going to add a text box to the page, standard text box under the standard toolkit drag that onto the page. This is where we're going to have our watermark applied. Now, I'm also going to add an extension to this text box. Specifically, we're going to extend the text box with the watermark, uh, text box watermark extension control from the Ajax Control Toolkit. To add that extension, you highlight the text box, click on the arrow, and add extender. And if you scroll through the list in the wizard, the very last control extender in the list is the text box watermark extender. You click on that and it should create a new one uh, called text box one underscore text box watermark extender. When that's finished, you can go to the source view and see that we now have a text box text box one and then the text box watermark extender, which has a target control of tech t uh, text box one. So this means the extender that we just added is now extending our text box. So what we're going to need to do is tell this text box watermark extender what style and text to use in the watermark that we're going to apply to our text box. In our example on uh, the Ajax uh, tutorial site from ASP.NET, you'll see that it's got some text in there, type first name here, and some different color in the background for the text box. That's the watermark. So we basically just need to tell our extender what properties to use uh, to apply in the watermark. So to do that, what we're going to do is create a new style. We're going to create a style using a style sheet and then point that style sheet to our application and then tell our text box watermark extender to apply that style to the text box. So to start, I'm going to first go to website, add new item, and a new item dialog box should pop up and you should find the item called style sheet and you'll see it'll give it a default name of stylesheet.css and click add. And once it's done you'll see on the right hand side you've got a style sheet added to your project folder and you've got the beginning of the style sheet with the body uh, tag. Uh, now we're not going to do anything with the body class for this example but we're going to create two new styles that we're going to apply. One is the watermark style which will be applied when uh, before someone is clicked in the text box and one is the unwatermark style which will be applied once someone is clicked in and govern what the text in the text box will look like when someone types. So to create this we're going to be creating two new styles or also known as CSS classes which basically are just a name of a style and then the properties we want to be applied when that style is used. So to create a style you create it by name starting it with a period so dot watermarked and then use open and close brackets, curly brackets, to enter the properties. So I'm going to start with watermarked and I'm going to add a couple properties in here. First I'm going to provide it with a specification for what type of padding I want to use. So we'll do two pixels, zero, zero, two pixels. So it's going to have padding on the left and right but not the top and the bottom. I'm sorry, the top 
in the left but not the right in the bottom and you end each line in here with a semicolon then I'm going to do border and so I'm going to do a border that is one pixel solid and it's going to give it a color a hexadecimal color then I'm going to add a background color and we're going to just do it in pick a color or we can type in a, uh, a hexadecimal value let's just do, we'll do aqua uh, we can then pick a color for the text I'll do gray because we want it to be visible but not completely visible uh, not as dark as what will be when we type and we'll do a font family Verdana and a font weight we'll do lighter because again this is the text that's going to be in there when it's watermarked so it shouldn't be as dark as it looks when someone clicks in the text box to type we're also going to create a second um, style called unwatermarked and this will be the default style that we want the text box to have when it's not uh, being watermarked so we'll type in here, we'll do height, uh, 18 pixels, we'll do width, 148 pixels, and we'll do font weight, bold. Now you see that there's a whole bunch of different properties we can use to put inside to a style. Uh, in our unwatermarked we could also put background colors, we could put um, uh, color of the text, we could change the padding and so forth. But we'll just leave two simple styles, watermarked and unwatermarked. So we've got our style sheet created. Now the next step is to go back into our web application and we need to tell our web application to use this style sheet, to import the style sheet in when it is, uh, when it is uh, creating the web page so that it can locate those two styles, watermarked and unwatermarked, and then use them in the page. I know that we've got it here in the project folder, however, they haven't been linked, uh, the style sheet hasn't been linked to our web page yet. So to do that, we're going to go into the source view, and we want to go into the header section of our page. So we'll see head, and in the head tags, there's a title, but then in here we want to add a style tag, and the style tag we're going to point to this style sheet. So do that by starting by typing the style tag, so with an open, uh, with a less than sign and then style. And you'll see IntelliSense should start to help you out there. And if you click on that, it should fill it in for you with a style open and close tag. And we just need to tell the style a couple things. One, what type it is. And it's going to be the text CSS type. And then we need to tell it where to get the style. So we could type in the styles right here in the style tag for the page, but we're going to import them from that style sheet we just created. So to do that, we'll type in at import, and then we'll type URL, then our file name, dot CSS, close, and then a semicolon. And what this is saying is we want to import a file as our style sheet, and we want to use the one that is located at the following URL. And since this is in the same folder as our default web app page, it'll just need the file name here. If we were going to put this style sheet in another folder, for example, styles, we would add the, we'd have to add the folder here as well. Okay, so now that that's linked, we can add those styles to our text box and to our text box watermark extender. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the default style for the text box as being unwatermarked. So when the watermark is not applied, we want the text box to use that unwatermarked style that we just defined in our style sheet. So if I highlight the text box, and we can do this from this view or from the design view, you'll see on the right hand side in the properties section, one of the options is CSS class. And since we've pointed our web application to our style sheet, it knows to import those styles there's an arrow here and you'll see that those two styles are available. We'll pick unwatermarked and you'll notice that the text box got a little bit wider because we set the width to 148 pixels in that style. If we go into the source view you'll see that there's a new property added CSS class with the value unwatermarked. So this is applying that unwatermarked style to this text box by default. Now we also want to apply this watermark style to the text box before someone clicks in it. 
So to do that, we need to tell the watermark extender which style to use. So if we click inside the watermark extender control, you'll see in the properties a couple things at the bottom that we want to adjust. One is the watermark CSS class, and the other is the watermark text. The watermark text is what will be shown inside the text box before someone clicks on it. So here we'll write, enter your name. And then the watermark CSS class is what class we want to use uh, to define the watermark style. And unfortunately, uh, Visual Studio doesn't import those styles directly into the text box watermark extender in the properties window. So we actually have to type in the name. We can't select it from the drop down like we did for the text box. So we'll type in the name watermarked. And you'll notice that in our source view, the text box watermark extender control got updated to have a watermark CSS class called watermarked and a watermark text enter your name. So this means before someone clicks in the text box, it will apply this style to make it look like that style said with the padding, the background color of aqua, the text color of gray, the border, etc. And the text you enter your name will be sitting inside the text box before someone clicks on it. So if we save this and run, You'll see here that the text box has a watermark on it. It's got the aqua background, it's got the border, it's got enter your name, and it's in gray. But when I click on it, it changes shape a little bit, and it goes to the basic uh, unwatermarked class that we assigned as the default style for the text box. And when I type in here, it should be bold, and it is, because that was part of the default uh, unwatermarked style. If I delete the stuff in here, then click off, the watermark reappears. So the watermark extender basically just applies a watermark to your text box when it hasn't been clicked on or there's nothing inside of the text box. And the two styles we created in our style sheet are being turned, switched to be on and off depending on the state of the text box. So if nobody's clicked on it, the watermark is applied, the watermark style is applied, and once someone's clicked on, then the default style that we assigned to the text box, the unwatermark style, is applied. There you go. I hope that was helpful and happy ASP.NET coding.